you may or may not be able to tell that I'm a girl who likes a sparkle. Wouldn't it just look like a bunch of snow like fell off the roof and landed on you in the most glamorous way? This is what my dreams are made of. I'm Laura, and this is also known as Laura <laughs> Hello, you guys. I am Nora, and you're watching, also known as Nora Knits. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with me today, you guys. I have got something very fun because we're in the festive season, and you may or may not be able to tell that I'm a girl who likes to sparkle. So I'm here today with some free patterns to show you how you can spice or sparkle up your knitwear this holiday season. All right, so if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, basically everywhere I look lately, I have been seeing this sequin yarn. If you're like me, you watch the grocery girls and they are constantly talking about the crafty jackalope and her bling bar. And I see all of these sequins and I want to work with them. But I also think, okay, like sure, I'll wear that sequin sweater to a holiday party. But after that, like where am I, where am I going in a fully sequined sweater? So then it got me thinking and sort of Pinteresting. And next thing you know, I went down a rabbit hole and I felt like I needed to share what I found with all of you. So basically what I have are five different ways that you can incorporate these sequins into your knits in a more approachable way or in a way that's going to be a little bit more catered towards your personal style. If your personal style does that include wearing a full bedazzled Sure, <laughs> to work on a Tuesday. So if that sounds like something that you might be interested in, then definitely keep on watching. I also want to note that I'm going to be talking primarily about adding in that sequin strand of yarn, but you're not limited to, to making these design choices in your own knitwear. You're not limited to just using sequins to make these sort of textural, interesting choices. This could also be done by using contrasts like Kelly of Coco Knits did on her um, test knit for Rebecca Close leaf cardigan with those boucle stripes. I then took that same inspiration and used that textural difference on my Lika pullover by Sari Nordland, where I did everything in a monochromatic look, but textural differences in the boucle versus a plain yarn. And I think that it just adds a ton of visual interest to our knits without being so loud or screaming, I have a boucle sweater on, or this whole sweater is made out of sequins. <laughs> So I'm just trying to throw out some ways that you can make these things work for you in a little bit more of a bite-sized way. And in doing so, I've got some free patterns that I thought I would share because I think a lot of times these are some more risky or bold choices that we might be making. And so the lower the investment in the beginning up front, the better. All right, let's do it. <laughs> for starters, when we're talking about sequin yarn, like I said, the grocery girls, they sent me down a rabbit hole towards the crafty jackalope. And then she sent me down her little sequin rabbit hole where she has her own line, I think, of sequin yarns. And there's like 30 different colors you could choose from. They're basically these like fingering or lace weight strands of yarn. And then they have these little sequins on them. And how freaking cute is that? Some of the other brands that I came across when I was looking into these sequin yarns were the Lang Payettes, same deal. And then there's also the Kremke Stellaris, which I think is more of just like a tinselly strand. But whatever it is, it's adding a little pizzazz, a little bedazz, a little sparkle into your knitwear. So let's go ahead and talk about these different sections that I've come up with that I think are going to make it a little bit more approachable for you. I also want to say that this isn't necessarily a pattern roundup where I'm going to have my typical full breakdown of these knits. Rather, I'm just going to show you the patterns up here and rest assured if I'm talking about them, they are free and they're all going to be in a Ravelry bundle down in the description box. I also want to note that none of these patterns that I'm talking about are actually designed to include these sparkly details. They're simply free patterns that I found that I thought would be an approachable way to make these little choices and adaptations in order to include some sparkle in your life. 
For starters, and the most obvious, especially having already mentioned Kelly and Coco Knits and Rebecca Klo with that Leith cardigan, my leaky pullover, is utilizing these sparkles in stripes. So basically, just taking, instead of a whole garment being done in sequins, I feel like it's really fun to play around by adding those little sparkles into stripes. And I think the ways that you could make this work for you a little bit more are by choosing, are you someone who would prefer still a really bold, sparkly option with your sparkles, just without it being a full-on sparkle garment, then I do really think that the Lyon by Sane Burgard is going to be a great choice for you. I also love this one because I'm so into right now a long line cardigan as well as these more chevron type stripes or that herringbone, this more geometric look. This really has these bold stripes that are both the same width. So you could choose to either do a big stripe of the sequin and then a totally different color. Or if you're looking for something a little bit less statement, then I would definitely consider to choosing two yarns that are going to be the same color, but one has the sequin and one doesn't. So then you just have this textural difference. Let's say it's white and then you choose a iridescent or white sequin or clear sequin then you're just going to have that little bit of a, a shift in that sparkle and contrast the reflection. When you move, it's going to be so beautiful and subtle and honestly something that you could just throw on to head out to a holiday party and still be really cozy. But also, I feel like totally appropriate for depending on your workplace, you could totally just dress that up with a pair of trousers, wear it to work. I love this one. This pattern also features these pockets. So ultimate cozy vibes, but still getting that sparkle. So it's a nice contradiction of the more relaxed style of a long cardigan with pockets and then adding the sequins. I love that juxtaposition. Now, on the other hand, if you're someone who's still a little bit intimidated by the sparkles, I think it would be fun to choose something more like this pattern where you're going to have those stripes in a smaller scale. And that way you can just have a little peekaboo of sparkle coming through. Of course, you could always do the opposite where these larger chunks have the sparkle and then small reliefs of the skinny stripes. But this is the Hokkaido sweater by Sitzel Grau. And I just love the look of this one. It's a very classic sweater in general, regardless of sparkles or not. But personally, I feel like this one would be fun to keep things really classic, black and white, have either a white base with a little sparkling black stripes or the opposite, a nice deep black, just simple sweater with little white sparkling stripes. I think that would be so fun. And lastly, in this world of stripes, I saw this pattern by Devin Bencher of Nitty McPearly, and this is called the Vesper. Something I love about this sweater in particular is that it does have that sort of bat wing style shape to it where your um, the armhole is a very exaggerated just kind of curve in. It goes out really far. And I love this look. It Just the shape of sweater in general with a pair of high-waisted pants for the holidays especially. I think that this could be so fun. If you had a pair of like a brightly colored either green wide leg pant or a red wide leg pant, or if it's for New Year's Eve, you could even just go classic black, maybe something that's a little drapier or even a classic just white, really drapey and almost looks like a long skirt. And then this sweater on top tucked in. I think this one would be so fun, especially if you're going to do something like a white pant. Imagine this sweater in a blushy pink with then just that rose gold sparkle stripe going through it with a bat wing. Stop. Like this is so good, you guys. So those are my ideas for adding in your sparkles. Or like I said, don't forget this could always be swapped out for something like a boucle, a brushed alpaca, surrey, mohair, anything like that for a textural difference in the way of stripes. Moving on to something that I think is a little bit more underrated is including these sparkles in the either absence of or only on the trims and cuffs of your garment. You can see in these inspiration photos that I've pulled that most of them have a 
solid, sparkly top with just a relief on either the cuff of the sweater or the collar and button band of a shirt. I also love this one where it has like a pearly cuff on it, which by the way, I've just gone through Pinterest and kind of pulled inspiration for just the idea. A lot of these pieces are not knitwear, but I'm trying to take this sparkly New Year's Eve style and bring it into knitwear. So I'm hoping that you can see this creative vision with me, but I just love the way that you're either choosing to highlight or really pull back and refine on different parts of the sweater, being the cuffs, the collar, the edging, or just, yeah, kind of do the opposite. So for this look, the first thing that I've pulled is another pattern by Sane Burgard. I'm, I'm gonna have to figure out how to say that at some point. <laughs> but this is a Nelly, and this is a cardigan. I love the classic shape of this cardigan and that it has a little bit of like a bomber silhouette to it. But then it also features these little eyelets and lace going down the raglans. Already in this, you can see that they chose to do a brighter, more citrusy yellow on the main body of the cardigan. And then all of the trims and cuffs and edges are done in a little bit more of a mustard color. So now if you could just use your imagination to make all that citrus yellow in a really fun sequin. Let's say for this one, we do something a little bit more bold and go with a silver sequin all over. And then on just those trims and cuffs, button band details, go with just a solid flat gray. This is what my dreams are made of. I like this because again, we're pulling in this girly, girly femininity of the sparkles and the pizzazz, and then bringing that bomber or more masculine style into it. And when you clash those two things together, I think that's when you get classic statement, really balanced, well-balanced style. If you like this idea, but cardigans aren't your thing, then I also pulled this pullover sweater. And this is the Elsa sweater by Steen Holgard Johansson. First of all, the design elements on this sweater are just beautiful. It's got this V-neck, but what I like so much is the way that the V-neck and then the sort of raglan come together. It provides this little bit of a point, almost like this thing. I can't even call this a top. I don't know what I'm wearing. It's sparkly. <laughs> almost like this thing that I have on right now. So almost like a triangular cami. So I feel like this one would just be really fun to play around with where you're going to place those sequins. I feel like this one might be fun to do the whole body of this sweater in your more matte, neutral, just flat yarn, or even um, in a fuzzier yarn like they've actually done here. And then just on the cuffs and on the collar, add just an iridescent sequin. I think that this would look really nice if we did it in a black and just had like a black fuzz all over. And then just on the, the neckline and the cuffs, add a little sparkle divine. I also think that you could play with contrast a little bit more in this one and have the whole body of the sweater be in a black, say, and then do a white sequin on the collar and then the cuffs. Just guess. Lastly, this one I think would be so fun because it would give you a really fun pop of sequin but it's it's a nice understated piece that I, I don't think it would be too loud. I could see a lot of people reaching for this year after year for those holiday parties. This is the Plummery Cardigan by Sandy Sessler, and it has just this very chic, understated, reliable silhouette of a very simple no-button cardigan, a little bit it's, it hits right nicely at the hip bone. And for this one, what I think would be so fun would be almost to play on the look of having like a sequin scarf or something draped around your neck. So this I think should be done in a fun color. I'm picturing like a burgundy or a gorgeous wine red, and then having a matching sequin just on this thick and chunky button band or whatever we're going to call this because it's a buttonless button band. But this I could totally picture people reaching for year after year. Imagine this one in a gorgeous jewel toned forest green. Again, the matching sequins so that it just kind of like all blends together. You could totally dress this 
up with like a silky cami underneath some black slacks and either a little heel or a pointed toe flat and then some sparkly earrings or if you're someone who's a little bit less like dressy or you're just not going that hard <laughs> for your holidays, then I would totally just pop this on with a cozy plain white long sleeve or turtleneck underneath and even some jeans and a pair of boots. I think this is a really, really great one, especially if you're a teacher or your office like tends to get pretty festive around the holiday season. This just feels so reliable to me. So that's the second way is by adding those sparkles or working without them on the cuffs and trim details. Next up, let's talk color work. I don't know why. I feel like I just haven't seen it and totally let me know if you have. But for someone to use sequins in their color work sweater, I think that this is going to pay off particularly well if the color work that you're knitting has very bold and chunky sections and less of a layered or lots of little tiny designs. I also think that this tends to work better if the elements are more graphic and if it is a two-color color work situation. The patterns that I've grabbed for you for this one are first up Cedar Point by Espace Tricot. And this, first of all, without sparkles or anything, this is a gorgeous classic sweater. If you ask me, it's got this funnel neck with just some color blocking and then these little like teeth <laughs> that come down, which for me just gives me such holiday vibes. I want this sweater hear me out. All white. Half of it, I don't care which half it is, whether it's the top or the bottom, in a fuzzy Surrey white, and then the other half in a white or clear sequin sparkle. Wouldn't it just look like a bunch of snow like fell off the roof and landed on you in the most glamorous way? <laughs> Love. Next up, I have the Dragon Year <laughs> by Marie Amelie Designs. And honestly, when you first look at this pattern, the way that the color work is done, it already looks like it's glowing. So now just imagine this with sparkles. This one for me is screaming to be knit in a beige or more tan camel colored yarn all over. And then in these little, um, little peaks you've got on the yoke in a gold sequin. I love the look of this on its own, but I do think adding a little sparkle, it'll almost just look like, you know, you're crackling apart because your little light can't help but shine so bright from within. <laughs> I might be reading too far into it, but I feel like this is screaming for sparkles. Now, I've grabbed a ton of color work patterns for this free pattern roundup, so definitely go check out the Ravelry bundle for more, but I'm going to jump into a couple more just graphic options because I do think that that kind of is a little bit different from your traditional color work, so it's all within the same color work category, but I want to make sure that I emphasize that these are two different ways to do color work that I think could be so interesting for these little textural differences. So this one is the Pixel Pullover by Claudia Quintanilla. And this one has these little peekaboos of just little squares where the main body color almost looks like it could be a lattice work that you're just seeing inside. Or you could look at this as more just little squares. This I just think would be fun for a little bit of a pop of a sequin, but even better, I would totally do this one in the sequin all over where you're seeing the gray. And then I think even just a flat black square in the middle. So you could choose to do something maybe a little bit more bold here, maybe like a bright royal blue sequin all over, and then just a little black square. So it kind of has this illusion that the, the sequins have that three-dimensional element to them. I think that that would really, really like soup up this pattern. And lastly, for a color work pattern, I think that this poncho, I'm a girl who loves a poncho. I don't know if you know that about me yet but I love a poncho. <laughs> and this is the Lakeland Horizon Poncho by Carol Callert. And this already has a lot going on in the original design where there's a striping and sort of like multicolored situation happening. And then this teal blue, there's a lot going on here. But I 
would do. I'm I'm sorry. Is it boring to just do black and white all the time? <laughs> I like classic colors and using them in fun ways. So I would do the outside portions in a black and then the middle sort of hourglass section in a sparkly sequiny white. I also think you could totally do it in a silver or something to give it just a little bit more pizzazz. But what's really fun about that is I'm sure that you've seen those dresses or a lot of celebrities just tend to wear this style where you have a sort of black border and then a like bedazzled or just a smaller, more hourglass shape kind of popping off of it. It, it does tend to create a little bit of an illusion of this like itty bitty baby Barbie waist and then a shadow around it. So especially when you're talking poncho, <laughs> it might be nice to have a little bit of an illusion of like, hey, there's somebody under there by creating these shapes that are reminiscent of a, of a lady's figure. So I like that one too. Now, this next way that you can add a sparkle into your knitwear is one that I see like all over Pinterest, but again, haven't seen on Ravelry. And like, I don't know everything about Ravelry. <laughs> There's a good chance I'm missing it. Let me know if I did. But this was so cool to me to involve sparkle sequins into your cable or texture work knit. I love these Pinterest inspirations where basically the sort of garter stitch in between the cables is done in a sequin. So it's kind of like the cables are creating the peaks and then the valleys in between are done in a sparkle. And it's like you're just setting up these little pools for sequins. Love that. Now, do I have any idea how to navigate doing that? Absolutely not, but I'm sure you're smart. You can. <laughs> I particularly love these ones where they have the gorgeous giant diamond cables, and then inside there's all that sequin fun, and I do feel like it gives you a little bit more, I don't know, opportunity for some punch. Think rainbow fish scales. So this pattern that I've pulled for you is the Must Have Cardigan by Pattons, Patones. I always said Patones, but then I heard someone say Pattons, and that makes more sense. And it is obvious why I pulled this pattern. It features the giant, gorgeous diamond cables. So now imagine this pattern, which has a little peekaboo of like a rainbow sparkle on the inside. That would be fun. I also feel like if you really wanted this to scream holiday, and I know it's too late now to make this for Christmas, unless you're so speedy, which if you are, send us pictures. <laughs> But imagine this one in a gorgeous red cable knit cardigan and then some red sequins on the inside of those little diamonds. I love it. It is a diamond sweater. So let's go back to just a basic gray and then silver sequins on the inside. Love that. I also thought that you might want to get your hands on this sparkle situation before the holidays come. So I actually did find this hat pattern. This is the antler. I think that this is pronounced toque, right? Isn't that how that's pronounced? But I would read it as toque. But the antler toque, tell me if I'm wrong, <laughs> by Tin Can Knits. And this has those beautiful flowery braids coming down. So then imagine just in those little valleys, you add a little sparkle. I just think that that would be so fun, especially for a hat, especially for an accessory that you can dip your toe into the sparkly waters and see how you feel about it. <laughs> and lastly, the fifth way that I think you could sparkle up your knitwear this holiday season and probably my favorite and the least expected way to do it is in chunks. I'm sure that there's a better word, but chunks felt like the right word. Now, I'm even going to divide this fifth category again because I think that there's two ways that you could do this. One of them is by just isolating your sparkles into the sleeves or, of course, the reverse, the body picture, a baseball t-shirt where you've got your blue sleeves, that sort of raglan increase, and then a white body, but now make those sleeves with sparkles or vice versa. For this idea, I have grabbed the Copenhagen sweater by Sarah Clint. And this one has those raglan increases with these like yummy, squishy ribbing situation on the full body and then the bare sleeves. So I could totally see this having that squishy, squishy rib for the body and then a pop of sparkle on the sleeves. Again, have a little fun. 
I would knit this one in like a bright magenta and I like the, the sleeves to kind of be matching, but I could also see it having a, a magenta sort of body and then more of like a baby pink sparkle on the sleeves or vice versa. So kind of pulling a lighter tone and then a more deep and dramatic version of that same color and pairing those together. So fun. This was another pattern that I just thought was so stunning with or without these sparkles. Get this one onto your favorites list. This is Veneer by Rike Eliason, and this has the most interesting construction to it. You've got all of these triangular points kind of meeting right at the, um, the base of your neck with this beautiful, sleek little funnel neck top. This to me just seems like the absolute perfect way to have all of that top bit with the sparkles and then the way that the sort of body part would create this roundness here. Of course, it comes to a point, but the way that it would kind of come up and scoop down, I think it would look so beautiful. And of course, I have to go back to just basic, simple, either like a champagne colored top sleeves and then a black body, vice versa, all the same color. This to me is so stunning. Like I said earlier, you could always swap out these sequin ideas for something just like a textural change. This I think would be another one where if you did the top part in a mohair and then a basic body, this would look the vine. Like I said, I'm kind of dividing this chunk category into two because while of course you can do your sleeves or like I said, those sort of yokes, I also think that it would be so fun if you find yourself a wrap pattern like this one. This is the Live Wrap Cardigan by Novita and how fun to knit half of it in the sparkle and then the other half in your plain colored yarn. This would be so fun because you could kind of pick and choose. Are you more interested in the sequins or are you more interested in just having a little peekaboo? So if you only want a little hint of sequins, then you could knit those on the half of the cardigan that's actually tucked behind the other wrapping part and then switch that up if you're looking for a little bit more of a statement. You could choose to just have those sequins on the front panel where it is actually going to hide or you could just split the whole thing in half and knit one with like the sleeve in the sequin and everything else too. I think this would be such a fun way to customize that sequin sparkle look. With that same idea in mind, we have the Searsha by Marzina Classic. And this pattern actually features the wrap on the back. So even better, adding just a little bit of a sparkle. This I feel like could go totally bridal if you wanted it to. Knit this all over in a white, but then on the back have this gorgeous wrap in a white sequin. Love that. And one more pattern that I didn't feel like kind of fit in either the chunks or the trims and finishes, but this one is just called Hoodie by Go Handmade. And if you are not the dress up type, but you do like yourself a sparkle, then you just slap a sparkle pocket on this bad boy. <laughs> right? Like a sparkle drawstring with a sparkle pocket, sparkle cuffs, and then everything else with like a surrey to it. Mm, this would be delicious. And I would knit this like way oversized and live in it all winter long. <laughs> So those are my five ways that you can spice or sparkle up your knitwear this holiday season. If you're looking for just a little bit more of kind of where do I go with knitting with sparkle, I also think that it's always a great idea if you're a little intimidated by the sparkle to just pair it with something that's going to be a little bit more fluffy and fuzzy. Think your Surrey, think your brushed alpaca, think your mohair. And the sparkle tends to kind of bury itself between those fibers, but in the light, you still don't lose it. So I just wanted to show you a few different ways that maybe you didn't think 
to include these sequin yarns into your knitwear. And like me, maybe you've been eyeing them, but wondering what the heck am I going to do with that once I get it into my life? So I hope that this was helpful. Like I said, all of these patterns that I mentioned today and more are free patterns that I'm going to link in the description box. I've put them into a Ravelry bundle to make it easy for you. And if you have any other patterns that you recommend, especially if there's one that you've already seen that has this sparkle sequin included, definitely let us know in the comments. Other than that, if you like this style of video, let me know by giving this one a thumbs up and you could subscribe, ring the bell. I would love it if you would come hang out with me on Saturday mornings where I post my podcast at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time every Saturday. And yeah, we're just having fun over here. I hope you guys are too. I hope you're having a great holiday season and you get around to getting a little sparkle in your life. So with that, big ol' thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, you guys. Bye!